hesitate to say too much about the weather because you know Ohio weather. Just you don't like it, just wait a couple minutes. But it turned out well, and uh, it reminded me a little bit of uh, years ago in our involvement in work camp down in Mid Ohio Valley. I can remember year after year, you know, we're always worried about the weather because you have four days to, to paint however many houses, 30, 40, 50 houses. And worst thing imaginable is telling all these people you're going to paint their house and then have three days of rain and not be able to do it. And then the leaders are stuck doing it for the next six months, probably. <laughs> uh, but that never happened to us in all those years, a uh, couple decades of work camp. And I can remember clearly, not that we never had rain, but I can remember certain days where we thought, oh, we, we lost a day yesterday. We can't afford to lose this one or we won't finish. And the line of storms was coming and it would go like this around us. I've got, I've got screenshots of weather pages with a circle around Wood County, West Virginia, and storms all around it. Now you take from that whatever you want. But uh, there were a lot of people praying for us, and, and it, it happened so many times. But we're glad to be together today. Who knows what kind of weather we'll have next week, but uh, great to see you. What is that you're wearing? Have you ever been asked that question before? Have you ever asked that question before of anyone? Uh, if you're a parent, you probably have asked it more than once. I know I have a few times in my kids' growing up years. And so, you know, it's happened to me three different times now um, with all my daughters that, that one day I've looked at them and seen what they were wearing and how they looked and asked myself, when did they suddenly get so big? You guys still got that coming few years so many of you can identify with that feeling it's a little scary when it happens but it's also you, you have pride and, and good feelings I live with four girls my wife and three daughters if you don't know me and so for many years I never got to visit our bathroom in, in West Virginia we just had one among the many things I loved about moving here was I, have, I now have three. I've reacquainted myself with the bathroom in my house. Uh, but I did enjoy, and I do enjoy, seeing the girls come out of there all cleaned up, all dolled up, ready to go wherever they're, they're going. I like to see them clothed well, and I like to be able to say, you look good in that. It's probably something we all like to hear. You look good in that nice compliment to receive you know it's, it's funny sometimes as in, in my work um, people will see me out someplace away from here in the community at the store whatever especially little ones who are only used to seeing me here and s seeing me dressed in my civilian clothes and uh, they won't recognize me at first and when they finally figure out, you know, that, that it's me, I, 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 get, I get some strange looks. As if to say, what is that you're wearing? Uh, I get more compliments on what I wear on Sunday than I do when I wear my holy jeans. But I want to say to the church this morning, I want to give you a compliment and say, you look good in that. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh, the pandemic's finally got to him. What's he talking about? I'd like to read a few verses for us from Galatians chapter 3. If you want to open there, if you, if you have a Bible. Galatians chapter 3, verse 25, beginning. It says this, But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, 
For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I think one way to describe what Paul is saying to the Galatians is to hear him saying to them, you look good in that. Notice in, in the middle verse there, verse 26, Paul says to them, you are all sons of God. He's speaking to, he's writing to the church. So to the church, he says, you are all sons of God. Of course, he's he doesn't mean when he says that that the church is made up of all boys, all men, uh, because you, you read the next verse from, from where we stopped, verse 28. He, it's another way of saying, what is that you're wearing? You don't look so good in that. But Paul in Galatians 3 says that in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God. That's addressed to the church. The all is all the Christians. It's not all as far as everybody that exists. Maybe not even everyone that is assembled with us here. Some are still relying on their own goodness, their own righteous deeds perhaps, to be okay with God. But friends, that doesn't look so good. The good deeds of a human being are like filthy rags to a perfectly righteous God. What we need, if, if that's the situation we're in, is a different set of clothes. We need to change, we need to get spiritually cleaned up, put on a new suit of clothes. Paul says here that we become sons of God these days through faith in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. Verse 26. And just in case that wasn't quite clear enough, he goes on in verse 27 and he says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So how, how does one look right to God these days. I really could answer that two different ways from these verses and both would be saying the same thing. I could say, in answer to the question, how does one look right to God, I could say, through faith in Christ Jesus. And I'd be right. Or I could say, by being baptized into Christ, and I'd be just as right. Faith and baptism are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other in the gospel of Christ. I need to have faith in Christ. I need to be baptized into Christ if I want to look good to God. Now, what do I mean by looking good to God? Well, the last verse, verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Paul speaking originally to Christians in Galatia again. By definition in the New Testament, a Christian is a baptized believer. He says, as many of you as were baptized. It was something that had happened at some point in their past. These people he was writing to. And what does he say had happened to these believers when they were baptized? They had put on Christ. They had clothed themselves in Christ. They were dressed up in Christ. They had wrapped themselves up in Jesus. This, this image of putting on something, putting on something new is, is found throughout the New Testament. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24, Christians are reminded that when they became Christians, they had put on the new self. You see, put on. And remember a verse like Romans 13 verse 14, very similar to this text in Galatians 3. The apostle writes, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to satisfy, 
to gratify its desires. If I want God to be pleased <coughs> when he looks at me, I need to make sure I have put on my Jesus clothes. That I have really and truly put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that I've kept him on. And when God looks at me, I want him to see Jesus. Because I've clothed myself with him. I don't want him to see my sins and, and my shortcomings, my errors, my bad attitudes, my poor efforts. I want him to see his son. Remember, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. I am a child of God, a son of God when I am in Christ. When I am baptized into Christ, I am clothed with Christ. When God looks at me and sees his son and not my sin, then God can say to me, you look good in that. Or in the words of the Bible, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of of your master. Does anybody here remember the famous piano player Liberace? It's been interesting to see if there's anybody here that knows the name. Let me see. Okay. There's a few. Those of you that never heard of him, probably because you're too young, Google him this afternoon and check him out. Liberace was this sort of flamboyant guy who played the, the piano and sang. And he dressed in these outrageous sequined outfits and he wore all this gaudy jewelry. He was quite a sight to behold. And he had a lot of famous things that he said, famous sayings he'd repeat and, and one of them was this. He would say, Liberace would say, go ahead and stare. I don't dress this way to go unnoticed. I'd suggest to you that we could learn something even from that worldly man's words. Because folks, if we are truly clothed with Christ, people are going to stare. People are going to look at us because we're going to look different. And Christians don't dress this way to go unnoticed. This week, as we live the example of Christ in our daily lives, we don't want to blend in with the world. We want to be noticed because we want people to see Jesus. Amen. So today, what is that you're wearing? Is it what it needs to be? Jesus. Are you where you need to be? Do you have the right clothes on? One reason that we saved communion to the end today was to sort of drive our thoughts toward what Jesus did for us to make it possible for us to be acceptable to God, to be able to wear the right clothes. And so here in a moment when Steve comes to lead us in, in that, let's think of uh, what a gift we've been given. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray we have been faithful with it in speaking it and now that we'll go out and be faithful in living it out. We pray, pray, Father, that uh, even today if there's anybody here that has not put on Christ, that they will be seriously thinking about that and, and seeking us out for help. And if anybody's taken off those good clothes and is depending on filthy rags, help them to make a change. Thank you for your love and your grace, for letting us be here today, and for always hearing us when we call. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.